So you're looking to buy a new M1 Mac and you're worried, you know, it's got 18 gigs and only 16 gigs. What are you supposed to do with only eight or 16 gigs? You can't develop with that. What's going on here? Why would Apple do this to us? Hey everyone, I'm Jeff, the IT guy, and I like to look at stuff for developers and professionals. And today we're gonna to be talking about the M1 Mac. It's a hot topic, it's a hot item, and something that has really got devs um, especially myself, my team kind of worried is the fact that you can only get eight or 16 gigs. And if you're like me, if you're like a lot of other devs, you know that sometimes you need more than 16. A lot of times you will, you can be compiling some hardcore stuff and you need, you know, 32 gigs or, or 64. 64 is a lot, but you know, you definitely can be afraid that you're going to run into a, a memory issue if you've got less than say 16 or 32 gigs. It just happens. So let's talk about it here on this M1 MacBook Pro. Uh, in, in this recording, I'm going through and I'm adding stuff. We've got Activity Monitor on, I've got Xcode going, got the Xcode uh, simulator, which is you know a, a VM or whatever running, um, an iPad, an iPhone, iPod Touch is what it is. And starting to open up you know, Chrome Windows. Everyone knows that Chrome sucks the life out of RAM. So we're gonna start adding Windows uh, Chrome tabs into it. We're just gonna keep adding stuff into it and seeing how this handles um, these RAM intensive tasks. And this is the eight gig model, the one that we're looking at today. However, it'll be a good indication of if there are gonna be some limitations with that memory, uh, with the amount of memory. So we're gonna open up Terminal here you know, if you're a dev, you're gonna have terminal open probably 24 seven. You're gonna be in there doing stuff. You're gonna have Chrome tabs open. You're gonna be looking at, you know, Slack. You have Slack open. You might have Discord open. You're gonna be looking at Stack Overflow. You might be looking at like an MDN or something like that. Uh, you're gonna be looking at API documentation. You might have, you know, AWS open. You're gonna have a lot of different things open, a lot of different tabs. And so <clears throat> we wanna go through and we wanna see what the threshold is on this eight gig model to see when it starts to actually run into memory limitations. Um, because it is, it's a shame that you can't do more than 16 gigs. This is HBM memory, which means high bandwidth memory. It's what they did with like the AMD cards um, of yesteryear with like the Vega 64 and stuff. They had that HBM2 on it, which has really, really, really high bandwidth. Um, but at the same time, those, you know, the, like those cards had a lot of different uh, memory configurations like 16 gigs, I believe. And so one of the things that we'll see is the more things that we open up, the higher it gets into the, the memory. And so we'll see, you know, the memory it might start out with in the application memory, we're only using, you know, like 1.73, 1.8, you know, up to two uh, gigs of application memory. And then you're going to see, you know, cached memory and then you're also going to see compressed memory and then you're also going to notice this memory swap and so what i'm doing here is i'm just running flappy bird while i've got terminal open while i've got xcode open while i've got you know a bunch of chrome tabs open and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to continue to open up more and more of these tabs and so we're just going to open up more and more tabs and then we're really going to throw a wrench into it and we're gonna open up Android Studio. And even though the Android Studio uh, emulator doesn't work currently, it's still, we can still go in, write code, compile code, things of that nature. And right now, just for application uh, memory usage, we're up to 2.73 gigs. Um, and so that's with Chrome, Xcode, and it looks like we got Slack open, and then we've got Android Studio. And I want to talk about something. Whenever I show this activity monitor, if you see where it's green, that means that everything's good. However, if you start to see where it changes color, it's like a brown color, that means that you're about to hit that eight gig ceiling. And so if you've got 16 gigs, you know it might not hit that brown, but what that brown means is that means it's hit the available memory. You've, you've used it up, you're starting to hit that wall of available memory inside of um, activity monitor. And so this is called the memory pressure. Um, so it's already saying, you'll notice that the memory usage is anywhere between 6.5 to almost eight on the memory usage. Um, you'll hardly ever see a full eight gig used, right? Because the system is trying to stop that from happening. 
Um, but you're going to notice the application memory goes up to like three gig. You've got wired memory, all of that. That's what your OS needs. And um, so that's two gigs. So right there out of just the application memory and the wired memory, you're already looking at 4.67 gigs um, that you that you that you're using out of eight. So that leaves about 3.33 left. You've also got the compressed, right? And so the more we start adding into this, the closer you're going to get. And so you'll see it continue to go up here in the video. And what I want to do is I, I'm actually going to start to build a project in Android Studio. And so you'll see it says Gradle build running. I'm going to run this for a little bit and we're going to talk about what happens when it, when it starts to do the build itself. Um, you're going to see that these memory pressures are getting worse. Um, you'll see this going brown. There's some red in there as well with the memory pressure. You'll see that the application memory may have went down. Um, however, you've got like cached and compressed. And so your compressed memory, you know, it's like 1.56 right now. Um, your cache files 1.47. Um, your memory use, used is like 6.31 gig right now. Um, it was hitting that wall whenever we were building something inside of Android Studio. And so I also want us to notice this swapped use. And so this swapped used is this is the amount of compressed data that is temporarily moved to the disk. And so what this is doing is this is taking stuff that should be in RAM and moving it to the hard disk. Now, this isn't a hard disk because it's an SSD and these SSDs are pretty fast. However, they're not as fast as RAM. You know, they're, they're not gonna be as fast as RAM. Um, it's just the RAM is much faster, and especially since it's unified and on the chip. But look at this, this has 11 and a half gigs of swapped memory. What that means is this is offloaded 11 and a half gigs of data that it's supposed to have right now over to the hard to the SSD. And so if we add all of this stuff up, it says memory used 6.49. You've got the cached files, that's 1.45. At that point right there, you have used the eight gigs of memory with the cached and the memory used, okay? And so, when you start talking about the swap, if you add that 11.5 on to the memory used and the cache files, which is your total eight gigs there, that is 19 and a half gigs of used memory. And so it's a little bit of trickery, right? Because the system's offloading stuff out of the RAM. Um, I wish I had a 16 gig here so that I could test and see, do the same test across it and see if the swapped usage should be lower, which it would be, right? Because the system, the system is asking, it's asking to have, you know, this 11 and a half plus the other eight. That's what it's asking for. And it, it's having to do something with it. You can see that this memory pressure in the graph is actually uh, hitting that wall because the system is asking for more RAM that's available. Okay, now, out there you're going to be like, okay, Jeff, we hear what you're saying, we see what you're saying, um, but no one in their right mind is going to be having Slack open, 27 Chrome tabs, plus playing Flappy Bird on Xcode, Xcode open, iPad OS emulation, and trying to build an Android Studio application. You're right. Someone probably might not be trying to do that. But they could. I mean, in reality, they could try and do that if they wanted to. Um, and I can tell you right now that this isn't even the amount of applications that I would have open on a normal day for my job. Uh, I use, typically use a PC for my day-to-day -day job. And I can tell you right now that I can, I, I've used up the 32 gigs that I have in it just with the applications that I need. So it's not hard. It's not hard to... Uh, to use RAM, right? It's, it's not hard to do. You can do it relatively easily. 
But what this does is this gives a real world um, sort of stress test to see if this eight or 16 gigs is gonna be enough. Now, if with 16 gigs, you know, you're gonna have less swapped memory, um, you know, because it's only, it only at that point, it'd only be about three and a half over, right? So it's only, you know, three and a half over that 16 gigs. So the system has more available memory. And so unfortunately, even though this memory is high bandwidth, it means that this can, it can handle more uh, information faster that doesn't negate the fact that you still need to have uh, large amounts of RAM available to do some task. And so I've, I know people on their machines who try to run both an Android emulator and an Xcode emulator. And if you're trying to do builds with both of those and run two emulators at once whenever they do get the emulator for Android Studio working natively, you're definitely gonna run into that 16 gigs. So conclusion time after a lot of this, a lot of y'all have asked about this, about the RAM and if I thought that the eight or 16 was enough. And I said I would go out and I would test it and come back to you all with what my thoughts were. So after doing this test, if you are a professional, Xcode developer, forego the eight gig. Do not get the eight gig um, M1. I said professional Xcode, I meant professional iOS developer. If you're a professional iOS developer, forego the eight gigs, go to the 16 gigs. If you are a developer of any other kind and you have a 2020 or like a 2019 MacBook Pro that you're using to do your job, and you've still got Apple Care on it, forego this system pretty much altogether. And this is a little bit different than the video that I posted about um, the best machine for development. Okay? It's a little bit different, and, and I was right in that video. I was right that it was the best machine for development because it's heading in that direction. It's heading to be the best machine for development. However, the RAM limitations and the lack of native applications currently put this out as a viable option for a lot of developers. Okay, so if you're using Docker, you do a lot of virtualization, that's not natively supported just yet. But if you're a content creator or, um, you know, an, an iOS developer, then yes, it is. It is the best machine for development. And so, to kind of put all this rambling behind us. If you're an iOS developer, you do content creation, get the 16 gig, forego the eight gig. If you're another type of developer um, who has, you know, a, a newish MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, something like that, forego this one altogether, wait until the second, uh, iteration of this machine. Hopefully they will add more than just 16 gigs of memory and hopefully we'll see more native applications. We should. Adobe's working on them. Android Studio's working on them. So more and more applications are going to be supported on this new architecture. If you are a developer who has an old uh, machine that is on its last legs, I would say potentially see if you can find a refurbished 2020 model um, with an Intel chip, or if you think that you're gonna be fine, um, that you don't use Docker, that you don't do a lot of virtualization, but maybe you do web development, node development, something like that, then yeah, you can use this system. Um, there have been a little bit, a couple issues with node, but those should be worked out. So <clears throat> go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are. And I know you're not shy, I know you're not shy from the last video. A lot of people be like, Jeff, you're wrong. Jeff, you're dumb. Jeff, you don't know what you're talking about. You're lying. Um, and that's fine because it's, it's just my opinions from what I do, right? But go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Does this help you out? Does this sway your decision about buying an M1 MacBook Pro or Mac Air or Mac Mini? Um, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. We do cool stuff like this on the channel all the time. This has been really fun um, going through and doing all of this and talking to you all, helping you all out. 
We're gonna be looking at some HP Omen stuff. Uh, hopefully we can look at some more systems in the near future. Uh, whenever the, M, you know, the, the second iteration of these comes out, we'll do a review of those as well. Um, so should be a whole lot of fun time. So go ahead and subscribe and as always, keep it real.